So I uh, just want to start off uh, uh, much of the same as yesterday, but uh, really start off today uh, thanking the fans um, for obviously the weather. Uh, they showed up. They were loud. Um, it was it was pretty cool for me for my first time out there as a, as a head coach in a, in a real game. I know we had the preseason game, but, uh, man, that was fun, and I want to thank them, and I really appreciate the fans of Chicago. I uh, want to thank the players again for their preparation. They did a nice job. Uh, coaches, uh, staff members, I said the look squad yesterday. I want to thank those guys. And I uh, uh, had a nice meeting uh, this morning. And this morning, what our, our, you know, the whole goal this morning is to bring the guys in. And we have a team meeting at 11. And we go through the awards uh, for, the, for the team and look at some tape and, and then get them with the coaches. And really, it's a function of what we talked about yesterday. Those guys have to get better. We have to get better. We have a young football team. Uh, we have to improve um, in the fundamentals of the game, and that's what we're looking at. You know, obviously, we always look at the, the effort and the intensity which we played and how we took care of the ball and being smart. We always do that, but there's fundamentals and techniques in every position, and we have to get better at those things on, on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday of this week to improve our football team every single week going forward. So um, we're in that process right now. So uh, it's going to be a big week for us for our improvement, and I'll uh, open it to questions from there. What are the awards that you give out on Mondays? Just player of the games. Uh, we give out uh, you know, different awards for different things, different plays uh, that are made in the game. So uh, we, we end up doing that. So it's, uh, it's always fun when you win because you can do those things. But uh, that's what we do. That's for your offense yesterday. Zero penalties. You had one delay of game, which was intentional, that they, right. they declined. But what was your thoughts on just the, the, the overall cleanness of the, the effort? Yeah, I mean, that's been we've been doing that. Uh, you know, we had the officials, you know, in for training camp, uh, NFL officials. We use those guys to educate us, um, and they do a great job when they come in. And those guys, and then we had Big Ten officials here as well, you know, in the off weeks. And I think anytime you can have an education. Uh, of the rules so we can play smart and clean like we have done, um, that's always beneficial. And I think it was, you know, that's probably our cleanest game even through the preseason. Um, and that's, the, you know, uh, a tribute to the players really paying attention to it and also the help of the officials. You, your loafs and your hits principal grades today, when did those get given? Yes, to those are all issued today, yep. So if you had, uh, you know, if you were in 55 plays and you had 20 loafs, you know, that's not, not a good outing. So, and, and there's a couple of guys that had that, uh, but we got to do a better job with that. We also had reward guys, you know, you're in a 90% 90, 90 club. So if you're in uh, 10 plays and you only loaf one time, uh, that's you're in a 90% club, you know. So th that's a hard club to be into for the whole season. Uh, we'll uh, give that award out at the very end if you're in that club. Uh, but that means you played hard the entire season, and uh, that's always hard to get into. You talk about how it takes hours and hours to grade this film. Yep. Just from a practical standpoint, uh, what hours are all the coaches watching film, and, and when, are the, when are the grades given out in the mornings? or? Noon? Yeah, the grades are due at, at, uh, you know, right before the team meeting. So, you know, about 10.30, 10.45 in there. You know, I try to give as much time as possible. So the guys, sometimes the guys grade it yesterday. You know, they get it on their iPad. They can start grading it after the game at night. Some guys do that. Some guys get in real early this morning. I'm always the guy that gets in super early uh, to grade it and, um, and go from there. But, Pretty early. I was my my wake up time is always five. So whenever I get in here, uh, I start then. Yeah, you had a ninety percent club. Do you reveal that stuff or no? No, no, I won't reveal that. But uh, it's hard to get into. It's hard to get into. I think we had uh, the last place I was at. We had three or four guys that make the club uh, every single year. So it's not very many guys. What, what did you make of Dominique Robinson's performance as a rookie? Yeah. Position. He didn't seem to loaf at, at all in this one. No, it was good by really all the rookies. I mean, you look at the way the rookies performed, uh, you know, from the punter to our nickel to Dominic to, to uh, you know, all the guys, you know, all the guys that played. Braxton, you know, they all played well. Um, and that's really a tribute to Ryan Poles and his staff bringing the guys in here uh, that have the, the maturity to be able to handle an NFL game and the coaches getting them ready. Um, and then the guys going out there and doing it. But, uh, yeah, I, I was happy with all the rookies. You mentioned, the, you mentioned the fundamentals. Um, obviously, you're not going to single out players, but what are some of the fundamental things that you saw that need to get worked on this week? Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, every first game when you when you look at, you know, let's just pull out uh, tackling. 
you know, so when the guy tackles, you know, is he is he getting all the way up to the runner, okay, hitting him with the proper pad level, wrapping and running his feet three hard steps, you know, pulling in the hamstrings and then finishing the tackle. Well, we saw a couple of those yesterday, but we didn't see enough. Um, there was there was some lunging going on. There was some some things going on there. So we have to improve that. And that's typical of the first game. You know, it's like guys finishing blocks. You know, when you finish blocks on the backside, great example of that would have been EQ on the touchdown with Dante Pettis. He finished that block, came all the way across the field and finished, and it was legal. You know, he, he did it a legal way, you know. So, and uh, Dante set it up with a nice stem inside into the pylon. So, um, you know, just things like that. It's just fundamentals, details to that, and know we want to get better. I, think, uh, I know you're familiar with Aaron Rodgers, but how familiar are you with Aaron Rodgers' uh, relationship with the, or, or record against the Bears and his kind of relationship with the fans and, and that there's a lot to it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, sure, I, I hear things, you know, that we're, we're taking this one game at a time. So, you know, I know it's coach cliche, and uh, we're going to focus on us. This is going to be about our football team, about how we operate, how we play, and what we do. And uh, we're going to take that approach uh, every week. When you look at the big picture improvements that the Bears need to make, you know, when you come in and take the job, how do you view catching up to Green Bay? Um, focusing on us. I, I, I don't look at it that way. I really just focus on our process and what we want to get done and how we want to improve every single week. Uh, to me, if you start looking at other things that are outside your control, um, we control the controllables. And we stay our course in what we want to get done. And uh, we're writing our book, and we're turning our pages. And uh, we're going to do that one game at a time. Now that you've had a chance to take a look at the film, what were the pluses and minuses you saw for both Tevin Jenkins and Lucas Patrick at that right guard rotation? Yeah, I, I thought they both played well. You know, I thought they both did a nice job in there finishing their blocks. I thought their pass pro was good. Uh, I thought their effort in finishing plays uh, was good. I thought they both uh, had a solid performance at that right guard spot. What do you think allowed Khalil Herbert to take advantage of the opportunities that he got? Well, I would say that uh, he's obviously had a really good year last year. Um, he's got experience. Um, you know, he's a talented runner. And uh, I think, you know, some of them holes were pretty big. I mean, you, you know, it's uh, – Line did a really good job on those particular runs. You know, the one in the red zone was really good. The one midfield was nice. Uh, and he's uh, he's got a, a good pad level to him. He's got a good style. You know, the touchdown run that he had was was pretty it was a pretty good vision and a really good cut uh, by him. So he's he's a talented back. Man, on the touchdown pass to, to St. Brown, from a defensive coordinator standpoint, what about that play design? creates the conflict. Obviously, they take away the first read to the flat. And yeah. the but what creates a conflict that allows that to come open? Yeah, I think that it's, a, you know, it's almost like a flood route, you know, when you look at it. It was a, con, you know, condensed formation, and then they take, you know, obviously EQ had the high the high route, you know, but you brought, you know, Pringle underneath and, a, and another guy to the flat. So I think that creates confusion for the corner. And, you know, if it was – and, again, I'm not in their playbook. I don't know exactly what it was. But it's either the corner had to slough off on EQ or somebody was uh, had a missed deal in, in man-to-man. So I'm not quite sure what exact coverage they were in. But uh, – um, yeah, it creates a lot of problems for sure. Eddie was talking about how when they lined up on third and four on his interception, that, that he had watched enough film that, that you guys knew what they liked to run the two option uh, route there. Right. When you, when you hear a player explain, no, we saw it and it happened and I did something well, that's uh, – What's your reaction to that? I imagine that's what coaches look for. No, that's what you do look for, and that's really about preparation. You know, we prepare for that, you know, and that would have been last Thursday. It would have been a third down, you know, where we prepare for that, and we do a lot of walkthrough reps. You know, we do probably more walkthrough reps than most, and you're able to get those looks, you know, into those situations, and, and it's amazing how many times those things do show up. Uh, that was just what was called. Yep, it was a great read by Eddie. Eddie just read read the quarterback and did a nice job. I thought he did a really good job of, of popping up quick and you know taking it up to numbers. You know, and we just you know he took it so fast up to numbers he really didn't have much in front of him. And uh, but uh, we can do a better job with that. And then as you went through the, the film and, and able to remove yourself and kind of watch everything closely, what were your impressions of the game that Luke called and specifically some of the adjustments in the second half? 
No, it was outstanding. I, mean, I thought it was good. You know, it's, you know, sometimes you have a, a half like that, you know, where it goes that way and on either side of the ball. And, and then your ability to adjust, adapt, and overcome, that's that's the big thing we say to our football team. And that's true as a coordinator, too. And he did that. You know, and it's not only him, it's his offensive staff. It's the whole staff getting together, making in-game adjustments as they go, and what's going to work for us. You know, and so they, they did a nice job of working, you know, Justin out of the pocket a little bit. He did some of that on his own um, when he flushed himself, and, uh, and, and it worked out nice. How much did the weather forecast factor into that game plan? It was, it was a lot. We talked about it a lot. I mean, we talked about it with uh, gloves. We talked about it with shoes. And then when we saw the field conditions, you know, and because it, it changed in the second half, you know, you started to get a little wind at our back uh, to start there. And then obviously you saw the deluge come down in the fourth, you know, in the fourth. So that all changed. And at that point, we had that we had a pretty good lead, you know. And we all were sure happy we were up by nine instead of uh, being down by nine. So it was uh, it was a really nice uh, way to finish it off. How do you factor, do you factor that in afterward, the, the weather and the conditions? When you look at the film afterward and you try to grade, like Justin, for example, and he's saying yesterday that it was play to play whether he could even really control where the ball was going to go. Right. So you're trying to grade all these things like precision and effort, and how are you taking into account the fact that that's a really tough field to be precise on? Yeah, I think you use your judgment. You, you just have to use your judgment. You can't say, well, you know, compare it to a perfect sun, you know, 70-degree weather with sun and, and no wind and rain. Certainly it's way different, but I just, you got to use your judgment. So, yeah, it was, it was a tough operation, but it, everybody had the same situation. They did, we did, you know, so uh, just look at it that way. Any, any injuries coming out of that game? What's that? Any injuries that came out of that? Uh, game? I'll do the injuries Wednesday. Nick, Nick Morrow also referenced uh, uh, halftime adjustments as make, being a factor, even though you played well defensively. If you can't give me specifics, is there is there any way to explain just how well things worked and and how if that was just a normal thing, do you make changes no matter what at halftime or what, what was different about this game or what worked well? Uh, as far as making adjustments and being better in the second half than you were in the first. Yeah, you know, I think that goes hand in hand because we really make adjustments every series. You know, we're always in game adjusting as we go. You just have a little bit more time in the halftime. You know, you got your 10 minutes or, you know, depending on the game. But uh, the guys just did a nice job. You know, we do it, we have a nice operation at halftime. We give a lot of information to the players. It's very organized. Uh, offenses on one side, defenses on another. The information is coming from the booth up top from two or three different guys, and they present it out to the to the offense and defense. Then the coordinators take over, and they do a nice job of giving the information of what we're going to do next, what's our plan going in, what's our adjustments, and it makes it very clear and concise for the players. Well, was it effective enough yesterday that it's kind of an indicator that this coaching unit uh, you know, ha will have some – some consistent advantage of being able to be better in the second half than the first. Uh, I think by just by being organized will help us have a have a be consistent, being organized. Yeah.